Hi everybody, thanks for joining me for this new uh, webinar. My name is uh, Lionel Palassin and I'm a technical evangelist for Bonita Soft. I've been working with Bonita Soft for about five years now. First as a BPM consultant, which gave me the opportunity to work on a lot of different uh, projects with our customers to implement a business application uh, using our platform Bonita BPM. For the past few months, uh, I've been looking at this emerging technology, which is blockchain. And there are already a lot of applications out there uh, experimenting it. Uh, and it looks really promising from my point of view. But uh, as complex business applications start to benefit from the blockchain technology, uh, I wanted to see how we could actually leverage from the BPM method methodology and tooling to accelerate uh, the blockchain adoption. So this is what we're going to talk uh, about today. So first, I will introduce you to the concept of blockchain. I will try to do my best uh, to explain how it works and how it's structured. Then uh, I will do a focus on um, how we can actually um, integrate blockchain on bus in business application using uh, BPM technology and methodology and how uh, both technologies can benefit from uh, each other uh, using this, this approach. And um, then I will demonstrate uh, using a practical use case, uh, which today will be uh, car supply management, uh, to show you uh, the detail of uh, the implementation and integration of such a solution. At the very end, uh, I will spend some time to answer all of your questions. So don't hesitate to type them in uh, in the GoToWebinar tool uh, during the session uh, and I will make sure uh, to go uh, over all of them at the end of the session. So let's start. <clears throat> First, uh, I wanted to start with Bitcoin because you might not have heard about uh, the blockchain technology, but you probably have heard about Bitcoin, which is a, a cryptocurrency that allows people to uh, anonymously uh, exchange uh, money between uh, each other. The money in this, in this case is uh, Bitcoin. So you might wonder why uh, I talk about Bitcoin uh, in that webinar. It's because uh, Bitcoin is the first famous implementation of a uh, blockchain network, basically. So Bitcoin has been a little bit controversial because he has a bad usage and good usage, um, obviously because uh, he allows people to remain uh, anonymous um, in their uh, financial trading. Um, he allows people to actually um, uh, use it on the darknet to exchange uh, illegal assets such as weapons and drugs. But uh, we also saw a lot of uh, good examples of uh, Bitcoin uh, utilization, uh, such as uh, during the winter of 2014, uh, protesters uh, were in the streets in Ukraine uh, because it was a revolution out there. Uh, and they were not able to get money from the traditional bank system uh, because the government were uh, blocking it and, and so on. So they actually used a QR code to display them on the media and people uh, from other countries were able to send them money directly uh, through the Bitcoin network uh, using that QR code. Uh, and people in Ukraine were able to get uh, Bitcoin and to use them uh, against uh, real money. And those transactions uh, were not uh, oversight uh, by any government or um, a financial institution. So, um, let's get into uh, the definition of a blockchain. Um, before I go into detail of the structure of a blockchain, how it's uh, powered, um, the different characteristics and benefits, uh, I wanted to start by the definition as it's stated on uh, Wikipedia. I look online and I did my research and there is a lot of different definition and I found the one from Wikipedia is actually um, the um, the clearer after I really understood how the blockchain works. So I wanted to share it with you. So a blockchain is a distributed database. So uh, it means that its uh, main purpose is to store data, um, like other any uh, storage system will do. 
uh, blockchain is a storage system. Uh, his principal characteristic is that he maintains a continuously growing list of other records called blocks, uh, which means that uh, all the history of every transaction that are made on this database will actually be uh, recorded in a, and ordered in a timely manner um, inside uh, the blockchain which uh, actually bring a lot of uh, uh, benefits um, you will see in a minute. So the smallest element if of a blockchain structure is the block. The block will contain data that user uh, puts in. So it will be arbitrary data and that's how we're gonna actually store data in a blockchain. Uh, but in addition of the data, the block will also contain information about uh, the next blocks and the previous block. Uh, also timestamp, uh, ID uh, to, um, um, to recognize them and so on. And because um, the block are actually chained between uh, each other in a timely manner, um, we call that uh, a chain. We say the blocks are chained between each other and therefore that's, how, that's why we call uh, the blockchain a blockchain. When we want, what, when we want to add data uh, to a blockchain, we will start a new transaction and if the transaction is validated, the uh, next block will be added on the top uh, of the chain. So let's see how uh, the blockchain network is powered. <clears throat> it's basically powered by a decentralized network that anybody can join. Uh, anybody in that case can be any unit of computation that is able to uh, communicate with other members of the network through the network protocol and to compute a simple mathematical problem um, to actually uh, process the transaction. Uh, so in our case, it will mainly be uh, a personal computer. Uh, using the system, you don't need uh, any central institution to actually run uh, the blockchain network because every node is at the same level and plays the same role in a blockchain network. So uh, let's take a look to how the blockchain network will actually process a new transaction to add data uh, to uh, the blockchain. So if we take the example of uh, a Bitcoin, which is uh, the most famous implementation of blockchain, uh, in the Bitcoin network, you will be able to exchange Bitcoins between people. So let's say I'm Jack and I want to give two Bitcoins to John. I will initiate a new transaction to uh, exchange those two Bitcoins. Um, I will initiate the transaction in the blockchain network between two nodes. And the first thing the blockchain network will do is to uh, replicate that transaction on all the nodes. Uh, and that's only theoretical. In the, each uh, bl uh, blockchain implementation will actually decide uh, how many nodes they want to replicate uh, the transaction. For uh, the Bitcoin uh, case, the transaction is replicated to six nodes which uh, the people who design the network find uh, sufficient to prevent any uh, security breach. So all the nodes uh, will actually process the transaction, or six nodes in the case of Bitcoin, uh, and validate or reject the transaction. <coughs> if the transaction is validated, the block will be added uh, on top of uh, the chain and it will be part of the blockchain moving forward. Another characteristic of the transaction is uh, the possibility to add uh, business logic. So you will, uh, they call that either smart transaction or smart contract. Uh, it allows a developer to add uh, business logic uh, in the blockchain. Uh, I'm not aware of but any business logic in the uh, Bitcoin implementation, uh, but let's pretend uh, there is. Uh, just to uh, illustrate uh, my points, uh, if I take again my example about uh, Jack who give two uh, Bitcoin I join, uh, if we wanted to add some uh, logic, business logic in the transaction, 
we could actually implement a rule saying that um, the transaction will be validated only if uh, John's account has uh, right now less than uh, 10 bitcoins. So that kind of logic can be implemented, uh, which uh, give more power to uh, the blockchain. Another characteristic of the blockchain network is that the entire uh, history of transaction is synchronized on uh, all the nodes who are participating to the blockchain network. Uh, doing that, uh, we prevent people or simple single node to actually forge a transaction um, that won't be validated by the rest of the network. So let's take a look to uh, some of the benefits. The first one, and the one I uh, would like to uh, focus more, is the virtual continuity. It's the first technology uh, today that enables uh, virtual continuity uh, by design, basically. Uh, why? Basically, um, because um, the, the chain of block represents the history of every transaction uh, that has been made on the blockchain uh, since the beginning of a blockchain, you will be able to know exactly what happened to, uh, to one specific asset, uh, where he has, when it has been created, um, how it has been modified, uh, who owned this asset at uh, which point and where it is now. And you will be able to see it because you have a clear view on every transaction uh, that has been made to the specific asset. Uh, it's really important to, uh, to understand that point because it's, uh, it's really different than a traditional um, storage such as a database. Um, because in a database you will actually uh, create value in a database by uh, passing a transaction and then you can modify this value uh, over time. But um, the transaction and the value are uh, not linked and it's possible to actually, and it has been done uh, many times, for someone uh, to actually come and modify the transaction log so I can modify the value without uh, letting the, um, the transaction logs know. Uh, we can imagine other third party systems to try to replicate uh, some sort of virtual continuity by uh, implementing audit reports around the database and so on, but it's not in the, in the design of a database to actually ensure the virtual continuity, whereas it's actually in the design of blockchain to do so. Uh, transparency, uh, that's a benefit, but it comes with a challenge, uh, which is uh, the privacy in our case. Um, in the Bitcoin implementation, everybody can see uh, all the transactions that have been made, uh, but there is no much information about who uh, did every, uh, anything because it's just ID. Uh, but we could technically add uh, um, uh, people's information. We could add like, clear uh, information uh, in, the, in the Bitcoin network. Um, so that's that's a benefit because uh, it's not possible to hide information as it is today. But if we want to build actually um, uh, other use cases on the blockchain implementation, such as uh, healthcare use, use cases or financial use cases, um, people will be um, sensitive to the fact that uh, they need to add some uh, sensitive information. Resilience. Um, just because uh, the structure of a blockchain network is really hard to uh, take it down. Basically, as long as you have a few um, nodes who remain up and are able to communicate between each other, the network will be available and uh, up and running. There is no one central node you have to take down to actually uh, take the entire uh, network down. You really have to, um, to take all the nodes that compose that blockchain network to take it down. Immutability and uh, self-trust. As of today, uh, nobody actually managed to modify uh, a block within the chain. 
um, without letting the entire uh, uh, network know. So the entire the, the only way to modify the data that are that is stored in a blockchain network is to add a block. But there is no way to actually come and modify a block uh, that is already there. Uh, nobody managed to do that. Uh, and a good proof of that is, uh, again, the Bitcoin implementation of blockchain. Uh, today, there is a million of dollars worth of Bitcoin uh, circulating in the Bitcoin network, uh, which make it a really good target uh, for uh, hackers. And uh, as of today, um, nobody actually managed to hack the Bitcoin network to his uh, benefit. Independency, uh, again, there is no central institution that will uh, oversight or being able to interfere with the transaction uh, that are um, ongoing in the blockchain network, which make it uh, really independent. Uh, but there is a lot of challenges still to overcome. Uh, first, it's a young technology. Um, so with every young technology, you have a lot of challenges such as uh, educating people, so they understand exactly what are the applications, uh, what does that mean to use blockchain, uh, what does it cost, uh, what's the return of investment, and so on. Um, there is a lot of uh, prototype and experimentation uh, for um, startup and big company to do to actually find uh, what is the right application and, uh, and to speed up developments, uh, create tooling around the, the blockchain network. Um, blockchain technology, um, so it will take it will take really, uh, a few years uh, at least to uh, to become completely completely mature. Regulation, uh, because it's a controversial uh, technology, government agency and financial um, uh, agency are actually looking really closely uh, to this technology and is still unsure uh, how it will be regulated uh, by the official agency. Energy consumption, um, you probably already get it, but um, because we are actually asking um, different nodes to process the, the same transaction uh, when someone initiates a new transaction, because uh, we are replicating uh, the entire transaction history uh, to uh, every single node in the, in the blockchain network, it actually wastes a lot of storage and energy. Uh, which in today's world uh, might be uh, not that good uh, because energy is, uh, is money, basically. Privacy, I went through that. Uh, integration, um, there is a lot of toolings and framework to build around blockchain to ease integration. Uh, and you will see later on in my presentation, uh, I think the uh, BPM methodology and more the BPM platform and all the integration tooling they bring uh, will actually help uh, overcoming this challenge. So uh, having in mind all those characteristics, uh, hopefully you get a better idea uh, how blockchain uh, works. Um, and uh, he has a bright future, that's, um, that's for sure. Uh, to back that up, I want to share with you uh, one line from the Boston Consulting Group, <coughs> which is uh, which basically uh, think that uh, blockchain will be as disruptive for storage than the PC was for computation and internet for communication. So uh, it's pretty much a big deal. And uh, it basically say behind that, that uh, any big companies should look closely at the blockchain technology if they don't want to be uh, left behind or be um, actually challenged by startup uh, who will actually try to build application to disrupt the market um, uh, using that uh, blockchain technology. And it's always the case, actually, we already see a lot of uh, applications built uh, on blockchain or at least trying to experiment what will be the benefits uh, using blockchain. So uh, we have companies like Visa uh, working on building alternate, alternative uh, payment system uh, using blockchain. You have a startup uh, in New York City 
building uh, identity management uh, application using a uh, blockchain to actually create a unique identity on the blockchain network and use that unique identity to log on different websites. Uh, we can see startup trying to build platform so the government could use it uh, to uh, consult their citizens when they want them to vote for different laws. Uh, cloud storage, uh, some of the startups are actually trying to build application to use uh, blockchain as a, um, a big decentralized um, a storage place and, and many more. So let's take uh, a look to actually how we could uh, leverage uh, business process management methodology and tooling to help with the blockchain adoption. Um, let's, let's see that. So as I said, uh, the blockchain will en enable a paradigm shift in how companies do business by providing a, a new way uh, to exchange uh, assets. But um, I believe that um, first complex business applications uh, will be built on, on blockchain network, such as uh, financial uh, application like payment system, load management. We will see supply chain management application, uh, digital voting applications uh, be built uh, on top of a blockchain network. And uh, working on the BPM field for quite some time now, uh, I know that those complex business applications have something in common that, that they are usually uh, process-based uh, for the simple reason that uh, those business applications has a strong need for people who design them to actually understand them, to be able to streamline uh, uh, the business application to optimize it, uh, for the people who are using it to have a clear view of what they should expect uh, in terms of um, uh, procedure using those business applications. So there is a lot of reasons why uh, those business applications are usually process-based. And, um, and the BPM methodology uh, is really here to actually um, help those companies uh, to build uh, business applications. Uh, it's, really, it's already widely adopted um, by uh, business analysts and uh, developers to build business applications uh, using BPM methodology. And uh, on top of that, <coughs> actually the um, uh, BPM platform provider um, also provide platforms with toolings to uh, ease the integration with uh, third-party systems. Uh, they provide tooling for developers to speed up application development. Um, it's already widely adopted by companies. Um, by providing this, um, uh, this abstraction of complexity uh, that can come from blockchain or other systems, uh, we can actually provide high-level function for uh, process developers and business analysts to actually focus on uh, building the business application and to benefit from any characteristics that will be bringed by uh, the blockchain uh, without really our, um, uh, have to deal with uh, the complexity of integrating uh, the uh, blockchain technology. So that's really why I think um, the BPM will have a, a big card to play uh, in the helping uh, companies to adopt, uh, to adopt blockchain. And, um, and to demonstrate that, I will use um, a use case today, which is a car supply management. So I try to keep it uh, really simple, but you will see we'll already benefit from a different uh, characteristic of a blockchain network. Uh, so first I will describe quickly my uh, use case, so uh, really simple one, a customer wants to buy a new car, so he will order the new car from his local retailer through a customer portal. Uh, the local retailer will check uh, in his local stock if the car is available. 
If not, the car will be ordered from the production chain. When ready, the car will be returned to the retailer. And finally, we will process uh, with the payment and deliver the car to the customer. So really simple use case. I didn't want to, uh, to make it too complex. Uh, I really wanted to focus on uh, integrating um, uh, BPM with blockchain to solve this use case. So let's take a look to how uh, I implemented it using uh, BPM in blockchain. So for those who are familiar with uh, the BPM notation, um, here uh, it's a BPM process. Uh, I make it a little bit more simple than the one uh, you're gonna uh, see uh, during the demo. But uh, the main step are here. So basically here we have a start event, so we will start uh, the case from here. And here uh, below we have a blockchain network. And we're basically gonna integrate the BPM, uh, BPM process with that uh, blockchain network and see what uh, we can benefit from it. So let's say as a customer, I want to order a new car. So I will uh, process the first task, uh, which is order a car. We will register the order in the blockchain network. Then we'll move to the second step. Second step is for the local uh, store to actually check uh, if the car is available in, store, in stock. So for that, we will query the blockchain network uh, because the information about the local stock will be stored uh, in the blockchain and we'll uh, uh, gather that information at the, B, at the, <coughs> at the BPM uh, level. Using that information, we will make a business decision. Do we want to produce a new car or not? If we uh, produce a new car because we don't have it uh, in the local stock, um, we will actually um, uh, send a request to the production chain. When the production chain uh, will have built the car, it will actually be able to move uh, to uh, shipping the car back to the local retailer. Here it's really interesting because actually when the car will be produced, we will uh, issue a new asset in the blockchain network. And at this point, we will actually create a link between the physical car and the virtual asset. And that link can remain uh, for the entire life cycle of the car. Because basically, when the car is shipped back to the local retailer and then uh, delivered to the customer, we will actually uh, register all this information in the blockchain network. And on the blockchain level, the car will move from production, production chain accounts to local uh, retailer accounts and then to uh, the final customer's account. Uh, in the meantime, when we actually process the payments, we will be able to, uh, to exchange the money uh, to the car uh, in one single uh, transaction um, in the blockchain network. So that will prevent uh, any um, uh, mis-exchange in case the money is not here. Um, so really simple use case, uh, but we actually can see uh, a small benefit uh, and big benefit if we, uh, if we think a little bit out of the box. Uh, let's say um, now at the end of the process, my customer has uh, his car that he ordered. But in a few years, he wants to sell this car on the secondary market. Uh, what will happen is that if the new buyer uh, has access to the blockchain uh, network that contains this information, he will be able to actually track what was the journey of the car. So he will know uh, who owned the car. Um, uh, what production chain um, uh, produced the car, when, um, who chipped it, uh, which local uh, store has the car, and so on. So the entire history of the car will be stored in this blockchain network. Uh, another application will be for the local uh, store to actually check the financial history of his uh, customer. So if in the same blockchain network, we have the entire um, financial uh, history of a customer. Uh, maybe it's purchasing uh, other uh, assets from uh, different uh, stores. Um, the local store can access this information 
and decide whether or not uh, they want to deal uh, with these customers if they want to produce to take the risk of producing a new car uh, because maybe the customer uh, doesn't have the funds maybe he has a history of uh, bad payer and so on so uh, let's take a quick look to the tools i used to build that uh, demo so first, the Bonita BPM uh, platform. It's a BPM-based application platform. Uh, it started as an R&D project about 15 years ago and turns quickly into a, into a company. It's open source uh, for the business logic. It's based on BPM N 2.0. And uh, he introduced uh, an approach called uh, low-code um, uh, development which basically is uh, an approach between the zero code where you buy a business application from a vendor, uh, you configure it and you adapt your business um, to uh, the way the application works or the full code approach where you ask uh, um, a technology partner or your own development team to actually build an application from scratch. The low code approach is a platform uh, with a set of tools that helps the developer to speed up the development and um, with a lot of extension points and extensibility points to actually build uh, exactly what the business needs. So in terms of features, um, there is a design tool which is the Bonita Studio that uh, the process developer can use to design and implement uh, their processes using the BPM and 2.0 notation. Uh, there is a Bonita engine, uh, which is Java-based, uh, that is uh, in charge of running and executing processes. Uh, there is a business data modeler, so uh, the developers can uh, design the business data model and integrate it with uh, their processes. They can connect the processes uh, to third-party system using what we call connectors. Um, by default, with the platform, we provide a library of connectors to connect to uh, the most common third party application, such as CRM, Salesforce, uh, Alfresco, SharePoints, any databases, and so on. And uh, you will see later on in my demo, uh, this is what I used to integrate processes with a blockchain network. Uh, if you build a human-based process, we have a UI designer to build the uh, process forms and application pages and reports and so on. The UI designer is web-based, is used AngularJS and Bootstrap to build uh, engaging and responsive uh, UI. And then we have the Bonita portal to deploy the process, manage the organization, for people to manage their tasks and so on. So all those components uh, compose what we call the Bonita platform. Uh, the second technology I use uh, to implement the blockchain part is a uh, chain core. So it's powered by Chain, which is a, a startup in San Francisco. Uh, yeah, they have an um, open source edition. They provide a blockchain a test network, which is really uh, useful. Uh, and they actually implement a permissioned uh, blockchain network. So that's uh, one of those um, a blockchain implementation that actually uh, could overcome the challenge of privacy because they uh, implement permission so they can prevent certain people to access uh, sensitive information. Um, they also implement smart contract and smart transaction. And finally, they provide a client API, uh, either in Java, Ruby, or Node.js. And I use the Java client API to integrate it uh, with my Bonita platform. So let's switch now to the, to the demo. So first, I will show you the chain core uh, application. So here is a desktop application and it's basically um, uh, that application that I run on my machine that allows my machine to be part of the test uh, network. Uh, he has a few tools to actually see uh, what uh, already exists on um, 
the blockchain network. Uh, they manipulate basically two main objects, the accounts um, and the assets. And basically, uh, each account has um, can own assets. So in my case, if I go back to the account list, <coughs> I have two uh, accounts that will be uh, my customers, so the people who want to buy cards, John Doe and Jam Replay. I have a Bonita store, which will be my local retailer, and Bonita production, which will be my production chain. If we take a look to uh, John Doe accounts, we can see that he has some information about uh, the accounts and uh, more importantly, he owns 60,000 Bonita coin. So Bonita coin is my currency for the demo. Each car has a price in Bonita coin. Uh, if we take a look to January play, he has only 40,000 Bonita coin. And if I take a look to uh, the Bonita store, they currently have two Bonita yellow car uh, available. No, and the other uh, car available is a Bonita white car, but the local store right now has uh, none. If we take a look to uh, the process part, <coughs> you can see that it's a little bit more complex than the one I built, uh, I displayed on the presentation, but it does uh, basically the same thing. As a customer, I can order a new car. Then, um, as a store manager, I, I will review the order uh, to either decline it or accept it. If I accept it, uh, we will query the blockchain network to uh, retrieve the number of uh, cars available. If the car that the customer order is not available, we will actually order it and we will notify the customer for delay. So we will order it from the production chain. The production chain manager uh, will be notified. When the car is produced, he will uh, submit this task. Um, the car will be actually um, created in the blockchain network and shipped back to uh, the local store. The local store manager will actually uh, be able to notify the customer that the car is ready uh, for delivering. We will then process with payments. If we have an issue with payments, the finance manager will be able to, uh, uh, to check it and to solve it. And the process ends. So really simple uh, process. Let's take a look to how it works. So here I can access my portal. So that's my default portal. Uh, I will get back to that in a second. First, I'm going to log as uh, John Doe. So John Doe uh, has his list of tasks, uh, list of ongoing cases, and he can create new processes. Uh, but more importantly, for the customer portal part, I created what we call the uh, a business application. So it's basically uh, pages that sit on my uh, Bonita portal, but which is completely uh, customized for uh, my customers. So here I can see I already have one order that has been done. Uh, and as John Doe, I can order a new car. So I'm going to start the order of the white car. Right. Now I can see that the new order is here and is under review. So if I go back and I log as a store manager, I can see that I have a task available. So for the store manager, I didn't create a, a a complete customized business application. I'm just using uh, the um, portal provided by uh, Bonita by default. So it's my task list. I have one task I have to, uh, to process. I can take it, I can review it, I can make it bigger if I want. So we are gonna order a white car and the price is 50,000 Bonita coins. Okay, I can accept it. 
And uh, if you remember well, the white cars are not available right now. So uh, we are going to order one from the production chain. Uh, we need to um, let the customers know that there will be a delay. Uh, let's say the customer accept. And by the way, here uh, the customer can actually review and follow uh, the progress. So here he knows that the car is in production. So I'm gonna log as the production manager to uh, order the car, to produce it, sorry. So here I have my task. Say that the new car has to be produced. Uh, I'm gonna say it has been produced today. Submit. Uh, I go back as the store manager. I see that the car is available and I can notify my customers for availability. Uh, I can then process with payment and the car now should be delivered. Perfect. Uh, let's take a look to uh, the chain core part. Now, if I go back to my John Doe account uh, in the balance part, I can see that I have one Bonita white car and I have uh, only 10,000 Bonita account. Uh, I can see all the transactions that has been made to this specific account. Uh, let's do another test. Uh, let's say as uh, Jan, we play. I want to order a car as well. Uh, I have no ongoing order. I'm gonna order a yellow car. Okay, send a review. As a store manager, I'm gonna review the order and accept it. That one costs 55,000. Bonita coins, and if you remember correctly, we have two in stock, so I don't need to order one from production. But also, Jan replay only have 40,000 Bonita coins. So let's see what happens if I try to process with the payment. Here, I should have get my car, uh, but I have an issue with payment. It's probably because I don't have enough money. Let's log with the finance manager. Can take uh, and here we can actually see the reason why uh, the transaction has been rejected by the blockchain is because there is not enough funds. I can either retry the payment or abort it. I'm gonna abort it. And here the order has been aborted. Let's take a look to uh, the chain core network to see that uh, Jan will play uh, nothing change for him. So that's all for my demo. Uh, thanks for uh, joining today again. Uh, I will now open for question that you might have. So I'm gonna put that here um, and I'm gonna look at the question. So first uh, you ask me, can you update an existing block in a chain? Uh, basically no. Uh, as I said, the blocks that already uh, are present in the chain uh, from the past transaction are immutable, so nobody can actually modify it. Uh, what you will do is uh, add new blocks to the chain to actually modify maybe the value uh, impacted by the specific uh, other blocks, but you cannot modify a block that already exists. Uh, can you show us how you call the chain core API from Bonitasoft BPM? For sure. So, uh, as I said here, I am actually using uh, connectors to connect my process to uh, the blockchain uh, network. So, I implemented a set of connectors. So, here I have different connectors that I implemented. And they are actually using uh, behind the scene the uh, Java client API provided by chain. So it's available on uh, GitHub. So let me just quickly uh, go and show you uh, GitHub. Uh, and the can access one here, 
this notation. Uh, if I take a look to one of them, I can actually uh, see the code that I'm using. It's using the chain API provided by uh, by chain, basically. Um, is it required for me to join the blockchain network in order for integration with BPM uh, to work? So basically, um, yes, the server uh, who will run the process will have to have access to uh, the client API and that that client API uh, will be the one who integrates uh, with the blockchain network. So here uh, I'm actually um, connecting directly uh, through uh, to the uh, network, my blockchain network, which run locally, uh, but through uh, HTTP, through TCP, uh, TCP IP, my bad. Uh, so the client here will actually uh, connect through TCP IP to my localhost, and uh, this localhost uh, on a specific port uh, run uh, the blockchain uh, node that is part of the uh, blockchain test network. Um, so if you want to actually um, um, use the test network, so you can just join the blockchain test network provided by chain. Uh, if you want to actually deploy uh, a complete solution within your company, you will actually have to initiate uh, a blockchain network um, by uh, powering uh, different nodes. Uh, all those nodes will have to talk together and run uh, the code uh, of the blockchain network. And then I have a client um, which will uh, give you the ability to actually interact with the chain uh, network uh, and you can integrate it uh, through BPM uh, once everything is in place. <coughs> Uh, so it's linked to another question, which is, is, is it possible to create a private uh, blockchain network? Uh, yes, it's actually the case. Uh, so you will uh, actually initiate uh, different nodes in your private network. So um, if you have a private network in your own company or uh, internal network, you can actually deploy the blockchain network uh, internally and nobody externally will be able to, uh, to access it. Uh, how can you query the blockchain and create uh, reports? Um, so I already query uh, the blockchain uh, with connectors using the client API they provide. So they have a, a set of APIs to qu query and, and, and get information from uh, uh, that are stored in the blockchain network. Uh, but here is only uh, through connectors. I could easily uh, do the same thing uh, with a REST API extension. So my Bonita platform, my BPM platform, will expose a new uh, REST API uh, that I will create, and I will uh, implement the logging by using the chain client API to query data from the blockchain. And that REST API will then be consumed by uh, an application page that we can create uh, to deploy in my applications. So let me show you uh, the UI designer for that. Here I have uh, pages that I created with my UI designer that actually is the one uh, that is used um, in my uh, application. So that's how I built my uh, business application, my customer portal to manage the car order. Uh, and so it's a web-based uh, page that will actually uh, consume the external API, uh, REST API. So uh, we can easily imagine that I will create a new uh, variable to query data from my the REST API extension that we have created and uh, consume this data to uh, create meaningful reports uh, for my end users. So in the community edition, I don't have any widgets to actually create charts. I can create table to display data. But if you take a look to the uh, options that are available in the subscription edition, you can actually have a chart, a visual chart uh, that can be uh, populated by data from a REST API uh, endpoint uh, to create meaningful report. Uh, I have another question about privacy. So the question is, is any healthcare players in blockchain um, 
who are concerned about privacy. Uh, I don't know any uh, companies, um, healthcare companies that are actually looking at blockchain technology. I'm sure they are uh, already uh, looking at it and are trying to build an application on top of it. <coughs> uh, the use case I will uh, easily imagine uh, that can be built is uh, trying to create a decentralized database of uh, patient medical information that nobody can actually modify. Uh, and for the privacy part, uh, again, uh, people who are actually implementing new uh, uh, blockchain network are actually uh, coming up with solution for privacy with uh, the notion of permission. Another question is, uh, which blockchain technologies do you envision to support uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Chaincoin is new to me, uh, but essentially it seems to be yet another blockchain peer-to-peer -peer substrate, yes. Uh, we are invested in Hyper Ledger Fabric, yes, from Linux. Would there be a way for us to create a similar POC for that? Um, so I'm not familiar enough with Hyperledger Fabric to know if uh, they have an easy way to uh, integrate it through Java API. I'm sure they do, uh, knowing um, uh, Linux Foundation, they will probably provide uh, an easy uh, integration capability. So we can definitely build a set of connectors to realize uh, some uh, um, integration, some similar integration, sorry. Uh, at Bonita, we don't envision to support anytime soon any uh, specific blockchain technologies. Um, the connectors that have been built um, to integrate chain right now are uh, available on the community, so everybody can use them. Um, uh, yeah, maybe tomorrow we will change. Uh, our, technology, uh, our uh, vision and we'll try to integrate more blockchain technology but it's not, uh, it's not something we want to do uh, right now. Um, the idea was really to, to see, to show, to demonstrate uh, the, the existing capability of uh, Bonita VPN platform to integrate uh, with blockchain technology without modifying too much the Bonita VPN platform, uh, without the need to actually improve the product uh, or to support more components. Um, by by just using uh, the extension capabilities that already exist, it's really easy to uh, uh, to integrate a new technology such as Chain Core, uh, and I'm sure it will be the same for other um, uh, blockchain peer-to-peer -peer substrates such as uh, Ethereum or uh, Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, I will take a last question because we are running out of time uh, and it will be, uh, we can implement the same process using other DB like Mongo, Koch, etc. What is the significance in using blockchain? <coughs> uh, so the main advantage of blockchain is the virtual continuity, which is not uh, part of uh, the DNA for me of a, uh, any other database, even no SQL database uh, or um, uh, relationship database uh, because blockchain is really designed in such a way that there is no way to actually modify um, the history of transaction so anybody can know what exactly happened on those transactions where in the traditional database um, it has been proved that it's possible to modify uh, the state of an object uh, without letting know uh, the transaction logs or the audit report built around, around the database uh, solution. So yes, it's possible to build the same kind of process, the same kind of uh, car order uh, supply management, definitely, but they won't have the same characteristic because um, they won't store data and they won't interact with the blockchain network so they won't, be, they won't benefit from the blockchain characteristic. So that's all for me. Thanks guys uh, again for joining this session today. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, you can download our solution 
uh, on the website, can join our community and start discussion on the forum around that topic or any other topic. We will be happy to uh, uh, to interact with you guys and to um, to discuss uh, about any ideas you have around the, the Bonita BPM solution. Uh, I will see you soon uh, in another webinar session. Uh, bye everybody and have a good day.